Welcome to the Nutramedical Report. We've got a blockbuster show for you today, bumping up a bunch of notches, and at least once a month, hopefully we can get them on more often, the brilliant, the amazing, the actual researcher of the truth, Dr. Tex Myers. Uh, Tex, your books, your uh, uh, shows you do, your CDs, are what I call stellar. There really is no one in your class in terms of researching topics. And uh, like the... Um, the uh, tagline they used to have for Star Trek, going where no man goes before and searching out the truth, uh, it's Tex Mars. And some of the truths you find is like uh, someone who is exhuming the dead. Uh, you exhume uh, truth no matter how much stench there is about it, and you expose it in a way like your latest book, The Conspiracy of the Six-Pointed Star, like the ancient prophets who would come before the king and say, you are about to be invaded, you will be crushed, your eyes plucked out of your head, your thumbs and your toes cut off so you can't hold a sword or cut or run away. Your children will be executed before they pluck out your eyes, and you'll be hauled away with a hook in your jaw through your tongue to captivity. And the problem is that America is at that stage. We talked about that yesterday with Greg Jackson. And today we're going to talk about it in the third hour with Jonathan Kahn, his book, The Harbinger. But your latest book, The Conspiracy of the Six-Pointed Star, and they can get it at powerofprophecy.com, powerofprophecy.com. We've got quite a topic list today, so I want to run through it because we are in the eye of an a emerging a perfect storm, and I believe we are on the, on the cusp of the time of Jacob's trouble, not just for, quote, uh, the nation of Israel, which is basically, I call it, they should call it Rothschild land, which has uh, got the star of Ashtarte, the human sacrifice star of the spring uh, uh, harvest, uh, spring planting goddess, which is basically a star, meaning this entire nation is marked for human sacrifice. But we have a satanic cabal uh, at the highest levels that have seized both parties. So we have the, I call it the Obamni alternative. We have Obama, a bisexual, drug-addicted, um, Marxist Satanist, uh, who is now uh, parading as a high-level Mo um, Masonic, pseudo-Muslim, pseudo-Christian, um, Functionary for George Soros and the globalists. And then on the other hand, we have Mitt Romney, who may fulfill uh, Joseph Smith's prophecy of the white horse, which we'll be talking about tomorrow with Bill Keller, uh, that uh, while the U.S. Constitution hangs by a thread, a Mormon church will say, have a member of their church, a high-level member, will become the president of the United States. And, of course, people don't understand how close we are to a, U to a U.S. destabilization and globalism. So let's start off with this whole list of remarkable topics and your analysis of what's going on in our world, which is very dizzying, even for the brightest minds, to keep track of the news. Well, you know, Dr. Bill, what we're, we're seeing right now is a, uh, you're correct, that word destabilization. It's a global process, and as part of it, America is unraveling very, very fast. Uh, we're, we're barreling, uh, you know, down the, the with, with a locomotive, uh, totally without an engineer in front, but with planners, plotters, who are, who are really after our fall. They, they, they plan our demise uh, as an American. Republic, and, and they've gone a great, great way. Uh, so really, global U.S. destabilization, that's the right word. Uh, the, the, the infamous uh, British economist Joseph Schumpeter, who was a homosexual, who is quoted by everybody today, uh, Ben Bernanke, uh, uh, you know, Alan Greenspan, uh, even uh, Volcker, the former uh, Fed chief, uh, Geithner, keep from... Uh, you know, quoting uh, Schumpeter, who wrote uh, a, a very uh, seminal book, but he used the process of creative destruction, which is, you know, when we get right to the top levels of uh, Judeo Freemasonry, we have uh, Ordo Ab Chao, Order Out of Chaos. They create calamities, catastrophes, uh, world economic collapse, war, revolution, and out of that then comes what they believe to be a new civilization, a new world, uh, and, and so therefore they use the term creative uh, uh, destruction. So they'll sort of, you know, everything will be burnt to a crisp, then they'll build on top of that. It'll be yeah, a it's, new world. And yeah, even Newt Gingrich, you know, was quoted uh, on the cover of the Topper's book, 
the third wave, is saying uh, a new civilization is at hand. But, uh, Dr. Bill, your audience, I, you, will not appreciate this new civilization. It will mean the end of all borders. It will be the triumph of money, money in the world, uh, and uh, what the Protocols of Zion warned about, a great Zionist dictatorship of the entire world. Money will be king. Yes. And in fact, what we're seeing right now is the uh, renewal of the ancient ceremony of the phoenix uh, done by the Egyptian high priest, the ceremony of Pahanuk, the ancient ceremony of the Mayans, the ceremony of the return of Quetzalcoatl or Kuku Khan of Mizo in Central America. Uh, these are ancient demonic ceremonies that literally want the return of the, of the ancient demigods, the, the satanic Nephilim. And in fact, they're literally calling forth uh, and to create a human sacrifice by bringing the masters of chaos to bring war to the earth, pollution to the earth, not solving Fukushima to the earth, uh, creating economic and environmental disasters like drilling in an area like the Macondo drill site when it was totally unnecessary to, to, to drill to get oil, purposely to cap off the oil production here in America, which has since reduced licenses dramatically, although 2011 we became oil independent and do not need oil from any other country. We have a situation with a person in the White House who is literally hamstringing America and 50,000 factories have been shipped in the last 10 years to foreign countries. This is not a way to maintain either a military or economic security and it's designed to make America just a trade zone in a global empire of 10 zones, published in September 1973 in the Journal of Foreign Affairs, the Journal of the Council on Foreign Relations. You've talked about it in your book uh, on Project Lucid. I presented it in 1999 in my project with the project uh, Cam with uh, with the uh, uh, Prophecy Club dealing with the Iridium Mark of the Beast system. We're literally moving to a time of forced economic chaos and debt that will swallow the world and create a cashless biometric society where every nation will have to bow their knee to the globalist biometric matrix bankers. You know, Dr. Bill, these are man-created uh, chaotic. Uh uh, crises that are going on. Some of them, of course, uh, are contrived. Uh, they're created to, to just to drive men into a state of panic and fear. You know, the global warming, uh, for example, is oh, yeah. doing nothing but exacerbating men's fears. The Mayan uh, prophecies and the Aztec and all of these things that the world will end in December 21, uh, 2012. Of course, all, all of this gives these pictures in people's minds, and Hollywood is going into overdrive with movies like, you know, Hunger Games uh, and The Avengers and all. Uh, a lot of silly stuff, and yet men are worried. Uh, a recent poll showed that one out of seven people in the United States, one out of seven adults, that is, all right, actually believe the world is going to end this year. So anyone that says, oh, you're a doomsayer, you must be a Christian, you believe in Armageddon, and all, I, I'm talking about the average citizen, one out of seven, believe the world is going to end. I understand George uh, Lucas, you, you know, the motion picture producer, uh, Star Wars and all that, I, he, he also says, I believe the world is going to end. Uh, and I understand he wants to be up in space or flying uh, in the air uh, when the, the chaos occurs uh, and, and, you know, something happens on a, the natural order, well, well, uh, let the me, let me talk about the, and so forth. Let me talk about the natural things that are happening because there's some knowledge that the globalists have that I obtained firsthand by having Q-level security clearance and having ongoing contacts with people that are very high up. Uh, what happens is the ancients knew that there was a disaster coming to the earth and earth change. And what the globalists have been doing is building underground cities at the cost of hundreds of trillions of dollars all over the world. Literally, like it says in Revelation 6, they shall hide themselves in the deep places and the crevices of the earth from the face of the Holy One of Israel. And they're doing it. And they want to be the masters of chaos so they can control the population of earth so we won't interfere with their survival when the earth changes occur not at 2012, but after. The time of trouble on the earth is coming. And our salvation is the Most High God, not to hide in caves. Welcome back, and let's get through these amazing topics. Uh, text, we have lots of issues to discuss today. Uh, let's start off with, as I say, the real th issue is America's unraveling. 
The economy is at the danger point. The dollar is in a downfall. The only reason why it hasn't fallen is because other currencies are falling relatively faster, including the euro. The renminbi, which is the Chinese currency and, and the Russian ruble, are now doing what's called trading with Iran. They're also doing mutual bilateral treaties, so they don't have to use the U.S. dollar as exchange means. In fact, the more that we inflame the situation with Iran, the more likely we have the demise of the dollar. We have a situation where at least uh, a couple trillion dollars is held um, in, in uh, treasury notes by the Chinese. Of course, they also owe a couple trillion dollars going back to before the Chinese Revolution, which they refuse to pay because they're criminals. We have the Chinese also stealing industrial espionage to the tune of two, $20 billion, as reported by the Canadian government, per month just in Canada, and it's around 20 times that in terms of total value of, econo of uh, it's an intellectual property in America per month, 20 times that. We have a trade yeah, it, imbalance. It, it, mm. that, that we have Foxconn, for example, in China that treats their people so badly they have to put nets so people don't commit suicide from the roof of the building and Foxconn facilities making iPads, iPhones, etc. We have uh, the Eurozone now with Hollande, which is a another Marxist socialist like Obama taking over that will dismantle the, quote, Eurozone plan to try to, to uh, if you want to call it, suck up all this debt and have austerity fascism which means Europe will default by the summer. And I'm predicting that by June, Europe will be in a desperate state. Uh, Angela Merkel is on her way out, too, now that Sarkozy's done. And the oil price, of course, is dropping, uh, hurting all these nations like Russia and China, etc., Russia, etc. But ultimately, I think that the globalists want to start a war. In fact, they've already scrambled 22 Israeli divisions, nuts and Yahoo, I call them, and Lieberman want to start a war, even if it defies logic. As I say, the best place for their nuclear weapons is polished and kept underground rather than, than coming in for a nuclear hit on infrastructure or the, or the Kum Mountain facility where it's impossible for them, even with their most advanced bunker busters, to destroy the Iranian capacity. And the nukes aren't really the issue because there's 200,000 missiles armed with the most advanced chemical and biological weapons that Iran obtained from the former Soviet Union and we're developing on their own because they're no slouches. They have the Hoot Super Cavitation Torpedo that's literally an underwater missile that can travel 264 knots. They have the Akans Hypersonic Cruise Missile. They re-engineered the Shahib-3 missile to make it go from being a, a, a liquid rocket, which requires a lot of fueling that can be seen from an infrared signature from space, to a solid fuel rocket that can be placed in trucks stuck in the side of a mountain or a berm. It's impossible unless there's troops on the ground to take Iran, and that would mean an army of two to three million over a country one-third the size of the United States with half of its territory being mountainous, and the Russians have already put Russian troops on the Iranian northern border. So this is a exercise in pure insanity to bring a state of chaos to crash the world economy in 2012. That's what their plan is. But you know, Dr. Bill, I believe we're at the stage now, the deleveraging of the world. Uh, and uh, the, the crisis is such, as you mentioned, the, Euro, the Eurozone is collapsing. Uh, the yeah. Greek government is, is fallen. Uh, Berlusconi fell uh, in Italy. There's, There's chaos a, there. Not, so nine, Cozy, nine leaders. Nine leaders fell in two years. Yeah, they're, nine they're all, leaders. They're all falling. And the people don't, they're all split, but just like here in America, between the socialism, uh, you know, of the Occupy movement and the uh, individual uh, capitalism uh, and, and neocons of, of the uh, Tea Party. So over there, the same thing, that people can't figure out which way to go. Should we be uh, conservative? Should we go back toward capitalism? Or should we do what we did uh, in uh, France and elect, you know, Hollande, who is a socialist? Uh, but it really won't matter. You know, just as in the United well, States, it, you and I know, is, it won't matter whether it's well, Romney or Obama. Well, 90% of the, the debt that was generated. They run by the same uh, clique. Yeah, it wasn't uh, the debt wasn't generated by social programs. This is another one of the uh, the lies that the right side of the snake party, the Republic crap party, wants to say. The real issue is the safety net was part of ancient Israel that the high priests of of Aaron and the Cohens were actually told to keep out of business and were given the ties not to the church. The church was given free will offerings, so if someone was wealthy, they could give ninety five percent of their wealth if God put it on their heart. The issue is that a social safety net isn't the problem. 90 to 95 percent of the debt is, is created by the derivatives and economic manipulation by the global bankers, the masters of, of literally the magic of money, the god of mammon. 
And uh, and all they need to do is what I call the Icelandic solution is tell them to go to H E L L. Tell them to literally we're going to write off the debt. We're going to continue social safety programs. We're going to make the cost of things rational. At the same time, we're not going to start killing people. What Obama has, for example, Obamacare is Eugenicare. What we have is austerity fascism sneaking in the back door with Obama. We have an even sneakier Romney, who's a high-level Mason as well, backed by another high-level Mason who's a member of the, uh, what's the order within the Catholic Church? It's the uh, Order Templioris. Opus Dei. Opus Dei. He's an Opus Dei, says so Rick Santorum. We have another high-level Mason, uh, Ron Paul, who uh, wants to bring in libertarianism. That'll mean uh, he's a social liberal, so he wants the right of killing babies uh, in, to be a state right rather than a right from the Most High God that's an abomination before our, our nation. So if we are truly a Christian nation, we need to stand on the truth and realize God is already saying to us, you look on the left, you have a disaster with Obama. You look on the right, you have another sneakier disaster. Uh, what do you choose? And you have to choose God instead of these leaders. And that's a problem that people don't want to face. So they hold their nose and they vote for, quote, the least of two evils, and then they don't realize the consequences will be basically grisly in any event. It's like the shrimp trying to negotiate with the chef in which way they're going to be cooked. Yeah, well, that, that, that's true. And, and of course, they're both uh, money men. But, you know, right. Obama and Romney, you know, uh, Wall Street... Uh, the Zionist money model. Uh, you know, I, I've been doing so much research in really getting down into what uh, um, Romney really is, Mitt Romney. And, and we find out, of course, he started out uh, as a student. Uh, he and Netanyahu were contemporaries, uh, and they put the two together instantly in a group called the uh, Boston Consulting group, which metamorphosed into a Bain and Company, uh, which today is run by, you know, one of the highest ranking um, Israeli Mossad. So right. uh, agents, uh, you know, Orit Gadish. So basically, uh, Mitt Romney has long been a product of the Israeli Mossad, uh, which is highly uh, infiltrated and works very close with the Mormon church. Oh, yeah. uh, in, at many levels, they've even got a protocol uh, agreed upon in which the Mormons will will not uh, evangelize uh, the Jews, and I think that's quite interesting. You see these two missionary boys, you know, going door to door, but they don't do that in Israel because there's an agreement, uh, and just as the Vatican has agreed now not to evangelize uh, the Jews. Uh, so, so the Jews basically are having their way, controlling both the Vatican and the 15 million strong, uh, very, very super rich uh, Mormon church, the LDS. So th this is sort of what's going on there. And again, the answer is not in politics. Uh, people are going uh, the wrong way. I think Ron Paul is a good person. His, now, his team says he's not a Mason, but he they, is. they do admit that he has frequented... Uh -oh. uh, Masonic uh, Hall. No, let, let me correct speeches. that. I've, I've done years of research, and believe me, I was a supporter. His wife is an Eastern star. His children are all Masons. He's a high-level Mason. Mm. He is. Nobody in politics gets anywhere unless you're a high-level Mason. And we're back with Tex Myers, the power of prophecy.com. Of course, you can get many of uh, Tex's books and materials over at clayandiron.com. We have a replicated store. Tex, uh, you've got some amazing points here. Of course, what's happened is Mexico's basket case of things like Fast and Furious run by the criminal uh, Attorney General Eric Holder. We have also the, uh, fa the gun running game, which killed a lot of people in Mexico. The illegal drugs, of course, uh, is laundered legally in America and American banks. We have the gigantic socialist welfare state being erected with Obama literally trying to provide care and health care to illegals and other people, and yet having death panels, as Sarah Palin said, which is actually true because she was advised correctly, if you're 75 next year, uh, January 2014, and you have a health problem, a serious one that needs immediate attention, you're going to be referred to a, a uh, ethics panel as to whether you get dialysis, a coronary bypass, a cabbage, uh, chemotherapy, or dialysis. I mean, this is really pretty obscene. And the fact is, rather than controlling costs and get, providing innovative alternative care to, to keep the costs under control, what they're going to do is basically out eugenicide on steroids and provide care for those who don't pay 
and those who have been paying for decades and their families to literally give them a quick slip over the cliff or a quick slide down the, the uh, slide into the grave. Uh, and the American population, of course, is becoming more frightened. I tell people you need to put more trust in God instead of being frightened. Fear is the elixir of death, just like the Star Wars movie said. You know, fear is the from the dark side. And a lot of people are becoming preppers. I think being a prepper is good. And you can think of the positive side of it. But a lot of people are bitter, angry. And the thing that I don't want to see, which you are mentioned in your notes here, is they're cowering. Uh, can you tell us what you see happening going on because we have a distracted, trashy society that is looking for the next big blockbuster uh, movie like Avengers uh, or The Hunger Games to distract them from the reality of the horror of what's coming, which is much nastier than any of these movies? Well, you know, Dr. Bill, a gigantic, as I say here in my notes, item eight that I sent to you, and a lot of this is in my new video, Die, America, Die. There, there is this gigantic socialist welfare state being erected, and billions are being given by the criminal USA government. That's what it's criminal, to illegal aliens, blacks, Hispanics, to create dependency. And, you know, even Obama talked about having a great youth core. Uh, bigger than the the uniformed armed forces, uh, these are the shock troops. You know the yeah, the yeah, Soviet yeah. the Soviet Union had its Komsomol, this youth uh, communist yeah, corps. Yeah, yeah. The Nazis with had the... their Nazi youth. Always the same pattern, isn't it? It is. These are these are going to be the red youth brigades. So what we see in the Occupy movement is only a little bitty piece. It's going to get more and more furious. And, you know, some people are saying there's actually going to be a civil war, a great breakdown of society. And that's why the average American is getting frightened. And I think one of two things has happened. The Americans who are frightened, unable to function in this destabilized society, are nevertheless, they, they sense a horror coming, and they're stocking up on guns and ammo. I mean, hey, if you want to, if you want to make money on a stock, buy Smith & Wesson. You know, buy Remington. Uh -huh. Because I'm, yeah. And people are moving out of cities. I live way out in the country, and I'm telling you, people are buying pieces of land out here. They're doing everything they can to get out of the cities. Uh, they're becoming preppers. You're right on that. They're bitter. They're angry. They're scared. And they don't know what to do. There's no real leadership. On the other hand, there's what I call, unfortunately, and by the way, these average Americans are good people. I mean, they really are. They, they love America. They're constitutionalists. They care for our history. They, 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 they take care of their children. On the other hand, in, a, in, a, in a, a, a great attempt, a vain attempt to escape these things, there's what I call the trash society. It's an underclass, uh, white and black, although they're in different places, uh, as you know, uh, being drugged by meth, cocaine, and other drugs. Uh, they're mind-addled by the trash celebrity TV. Uh, if, if they have any thinking at all, uh, they, they, they run towards the, the techno moguls, I call it. In other words, what is, you know, what is Microsoft and the gaming uh, community going to give us this week? Here in Austin, Texas, where I live, one of the high-tech capitals of the world, I cannot tell you how many young, bright people are into creating games. Internet, video, I mean, entire little companies, corporations are cranking up billions of dollars in these games, you know, uh, Grand Theft and uh, Warfare and all the others, so that people can escape what's coming. Now, here's another problem, the American youth. They're unemployed, they're uneducated, and Dr. Bill, I don't care if they have college degrees, they're un undereducated, they're uneducated, because what they've done is they, they've totally broken down all the standards to graduate these people. And then they're giving them hundreds of thousands of dollars in government benefits, you know, government loans, to go to college, and they're taking six, seven, eight years to get a bachelor's degree. Meanwhile, they're lost in fantasy movies, sex, drugs, alcohol. And pretty soon they're, they're going to be bribed with more government education loans. And all of these young people, they're saying, well, what can we do? Bureaucrats, tell us what to do. Techno moguls, tell us what game, what movie, Hunger Games, The Avengers, what should we watch next? So their minds are totally controlled, and yet they think they're so super bright. I mean, they can tell you everything about Dungeons and Dragons and Grand Theft video games, but they know nothing about what's really going on in the world. They don't listen to the Dr. Bill show. Uh, uh, actually, you know, you know we have homeschoolers. 
homeschoolers, believe it or not, do. They, in fact, we found out uh, several years ago that many homeschoolers actually use it as part of their core curriculum. They listen but, to the but program. But, you know, when people... But that's why homeschoolers are, people, are, 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 people, are different. I ask people, what about transportation? Uh, you know, uh, what's going on now when you go to airports and such? And most people say, well, you know, it's just necessary... We have to put up with it, but the government's just trying to protect us. So most people don't realize what, you know what, it, I did? what it all is you going know what on. I did at the airport I went to, the last time I flew from Las Vegas to, to LAX, and I said, um, I, I put up my hands, I said, well, I'm not going through that machine because it causes cancer. And they said, well, what do you mean? We're told the machine's fine, uh, just walk through the machine. I said, no, I'm not walking through the machine. I'm a doctor and environmental specialist, and I'm not walking through that machine. I said, you can pat me down. You can body cavity check me. I'm not walking through that machine. And they said, you know what, Doc? you got to pass. See ya. Wow. I just walked right through the metal detector, two seconds, smile, and people say, well, why did I walk through the machine? I said, because you're a coward. They actually stood in line and say, and I looked at them and I said, because you're a coward, next time tell them you don't want to walk through the damn cancer-producing terahertz frequency machine. Well, you're right. Even their own studies show that uh, those things are very, very dangerous. Do you remember when you were a kid? Dr. Bill, maybe I'm, I'm a little bit older than you. I'm sure I am. Uh, but at, at the little convenience stores and such in the markets, they had this thing just for fun. You could pay a penny or maybe a nickel at the most uh, and put your feet in, and they would show you the X-ray. Oh, yeah, you, you yeah. Get they had those the around. I remember I, I'm only a few years younger than you. I'm 60. How old are you? Uh, well, I'm 67. There you go. You're only it, seven it, years older. But believe it or not, they had them around in the 50s when I was a kid. They had those yeah. crazy machines, and then they disappeared. They mainly had them at the circuses. So when the circus would come by, they had them. You could stick your feet in and look at your bones. It was weird. Yeah, it was, it was getting an X, these x-rays, and they were probably, you know, they really zapped you uh, 50 yeah, yeah, times yeah. what they do today. But it was so funny, you know, just for a penny, you can see what your bones of your feet look like. Uh, and, 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 it was, and it said on the thing up there, uh, it said, totally safe. Oh yeah, and of totally course now safe. they got rid of those things because they were causing everybody cancer and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, destroying you know what their bodies. Uh, Madam Curie, Madam Curie syndrome, right? Exactly. But uh, here again, uh, we, we, people will believe what the technologists, the moguls of technology, say to them. Well, you know what I call them. I have a new term. I call them Google geniuses. They can, if they can Google it, they're a genius about it. Absolutely, that's what, a, they, that's what they they're believe. They're a Wikipedia genius, you know, they've, we, whatever's written there, even if it's a total lie or fabrication or partial truth, in fact, a partial truth is actually worse than a lie because it, it actually has some validity, but it's twisted in a way to make you t- make the wrong conclusions because you have wrong a priori assumptions based on the information mm. that's incomplete. You know, uh, Dr. Bill, one of the things that I think is very dangerous, and the reason we're getting close to the war point, I mean, great revolution and war around the world, World War III, is because our own armed forces are now now bad discipline, low morale, they're well, look mutinying. At this, look at this Marine here that's being defrocked because he wanted to, quote, have the removal of, of on a private Facebook, the Marine here, Raiden Pendleton next door, and... Uh, they're removing him without pay from the Marines. Welcome back. I think uh, one of the things about this time, Tex, I'm going to get your opinion on this, is I think we're uh, like the times of the prophets Jeremiah and Habakkuk. Uh, some of the major prophet Jeremiah and the minor prophet Habakkuk that literally prophesied to a nation that didn't want to hear that uh, the treasures of the temple would be hauled away, that the kings would be hauled away to captivity, that their families would be executed. They didn't want to hear it. So they wanted to hear uh, false prophets like uh, prophet, uh, oh, what's his name? Flip Hananiah Romney, I guess the prophet Romney, or the prophet uh, Obama, uh, or the know, false prophet know. Obama that says change you know, and hope. Change in hope. I guess that maybe he's trying to re, you know, launder that kind of uh, tagline so he can try to reelect, get reelected, or maybe put enough goodies out for the illegal aliens rather than the legal American citizens and export more business to to satanic nations like China. One of the real telling things is how America didn't back uh, the Chinese privately or personally trained attorney who was fighting for against the one-child policy in China, the blind uh, Chinese, uh, if you want to call patriot. 
that mm-hmm. pro life that actually was fighting over there. We didn't get a clear statement for Obama that would say, but of course, American policy under Obama has been murder the babies, murder them quickly in Kenya to China to anywhere on earth, but murder them. And uh, he wants to do that to the senior citizens, too. That's the next thing with Obama. He is a monster. And of course, in the background, we have the monster of Hitlery, Rodham, Shipton, Clinton. Lilith, otherwise known as the wife of Satan himself. And then we have uh, mit- Mittens, uh, I call it uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde Romney, uh, who uh, is literally the author of some of the most heinous liberal doctrines of any state governor in American history, yet he tries to say he's a conservative Republican. It's just obscene. And when we hear about the email that Rick Santorum now endorses him and that we have the situation coming up, I don't believe that Romney couldn't get elected. I think he'll be uh, like a 2004 carry, and we're going to be facing another term of the abominator. That's yeah, it's, it's very possible. I understand. I, you know, I'm, I'm getting some, uh, let's just say, some early information uh, that uh, Romney, there, there are many, many financial scandals. Uh, you know, he didn't have those, uh, those secret accounts, I call them, uh, in the islands, you know, off of Bahamas, Antigua and all that, for nothing. Uh, those were used to launder money and to do a lot of criminal deals for Bain Company. Bain and Company is a real key to knowing who Romney really is and who controls him. Well, but I they're, believe they have they're, the, they're, they're the Israeli a, Mossad has a, a dossier on him, right. uh, and if he doesn't do what they want, uh, they can destroy him overnight. And at the same time, Sheriff uh, Joe R. Powell, you know, down in Arizona, has right. done a fabulous job of exposing the fact that we all knew, yet Joe R. Powell has put together a crack team as law enforcement uh, officer. Uh, you know, and now we, come on, everybody knows, all of Congress knows, uh, and every individual citizen practically, that that uh, Barack Obama it was not an American citizen. Uh, he, he's not a constitutional. We're, we have an Ill- illegitimate presence, uh, presidency. Now, Joe R. Powell said something very wise last week. He said the real reason we have Obama, the illegitimate president, whose birth certificate is a fraud, is because the Republicans in Congress are too frightened or too cowardly to do anything. So on one hand, we know all about Obama, uh, the fact that he is an illegitimate president. He is a fraud. At the same time, Romney and the Republicans cannot say anything about it because they all have dossiers on them. Their sexual peccadillos, their drug use, their homosexuality is all documented and kept by the CIA and the Mossad. Uh, and so they're frightened to death, too, uh, to expose Obama. So they're going along with all of this. They will, Listen to this. They will go all the way up to World War III and the murder of 200 million Americans to protect their own little spiny, uh, cowardly uh, selves. Oh, yeah, and, exactly. and that's just the truth. And it's a shame that we've got congressmen like that. Uh, it, I mean, it's almost, you know, what's the old uh, Greek was it Diogenes was going out with a light looking for an honest man? Yes. That's what we have to do. We have to go out with a light somewhere. Is there somewhere in this great shining city, used to be shining America, is there one politician we can trust and believe in? And, and that's, that's where we're at today. And I think that's why America is unraveling and the people are turning to all kind of pursuits. The wise American is, going, is arming themselves. They're preparing. Uh, they know... Everything is going to come unglued all at once, uh, and and you know, and, and Obama and all of them are are working. Look at Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton. These guys are paid agents to to drive up a spirit of hatred and anarchy uh, and death and violence among the black population, and they're succeeding. And they're really paid to do this. You know, how are they paid? Well, they're paid uh, uh, through MSNBC to Al Sharpton, and uh, the, the huge corporations are giving them kickbacks and so forth. It, it is an amazing. You know, I found out that Fox News is helping to fund Al Sharpton. Yeah, Rupert Murdoch and his boys are funding Al Sharpton. How, how does that happen? He works for MSNBC, doesn't he? Well, you know, I remember the uh, statement by uh, Vladimir Lenin. He said... Uh, uh, it was a statement made by one of his functionaries uh, under him, and he says, what are you doing uh, next? He says, I am uh, busy about, uh, about uh, organizing my opposition. <laughs> or- 
recognize our position. Yeah, that's that's very true, isn't it? What a, what yeah. an incredible thing. Yeah. I, you know, I'd love to be a dictator and have people who oppose me, but I am the dictator over. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, you tell them, here's what you will do. Make everybody think that there's a legitimate opposition. I, I wonder now, you know, everybody sat at home with John McCain when he ran for president. They knew there was no difference, and the guy was a total fraud and a fake. And now they're finding out the same thing about Mitt Romney. But actually, I, let me tell, tell, tell everybody, the American people didn't really have a choice. I mean, look at the clods, the clowns we had uh, running for uh, president, Newt Gingrich and Michelle Bachman. All of them in the pocket of the casino uh, Zionist and all that. So uh, there, there, there was no one really. So Mitt Romney, just like John McCain, got the nomination or will get the nomination by default. Now, there is a rumor out there running around that Henry Kissinger uh, has been telling people, including some other world leaders, uh, that Mitt Romney will be uh, defrocked, let's just call it, before the convention, and it will be a brokered convention, and Jeb Bush will be the man. Uh, what do you think about that, uh, Dr. Bill? Very possible. I, I, I honestly think it's going to be a lot different twist than we expect. Yeah, I do too. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of twists. Uh, firstly, I know that there's talk that Rubio may be uh, Mitt Romney's uh, second. Uh, if Romney does get in there, he's going to have to make so many backroom deals uh, with Centaurum endorsing him, I would expect something like this. Centaurum being the attorney general to get the personhood issue. Uh, Ron Paul to become the uh, either personally or direct to the person that's going to be the head of the Fed Reserve to dismantle it and have it transferred to the Treasury. Uh, that will have uh, Newt Gingrich become the Secretary of State because he has more clues than the rest of them. And uh, I think that's the only way that he can get enough of a backing of the so-called Christian right that will, because there'll be enough of Christian right that'll balk that'll listen to programs like this. They'll say, "I'm not endorsing either one of these monsters." Uh, and the thing is, you can't just hold your nose because down the road there'll be millions of Americans and people around the world that'll become Mormons, and someday stand in a Mormon temple, say, saying their or temple ordinances before someone that plays Satan as the brother of Jesus, saying that man must fall from the doctrines and covenants, pearl of great price. Man must fall to be as God, knowing both good and evil, which means that the devil's purpose is actually a good one to make us know both good and evil to be as God. I mean, if that isn't pure evil itself and people want to defend it, I'm sorry, but I have two clues, and God gave a, a brain. He didn't tell me to leave it at the door to become a believer. You know, you're absolutely right. Recently I was reading in the Deseret News. You know, that's a, basically, yeah. you might call it an official... <laughs> a Mormon uh, LDS uh, publication, yeah, exactly. uh, and uh, a man named Mark Paredes, P-A-R-E-D-E-S, uh, wrote an article. It, it turns out that Mark Paredes has been going around to Mormon temples uh, and uh, t tabernacles and so forth, churches, yeah. actually, uh, giving talks. Now, he is the National Outreach Director for the Zionist Organization of America, but it turns out he's also a Mormon. He's a Mormon Jew. And uh, he's saying that the Mormons and the Jews are working hand in hand now. Uh, and I think that's quite an interesting thing. Well, a Mormon Jew, see, remember, every Mason believes it's a super religion. So it's easy to consider, if you're a high level Mason, that being a Jew or a Mormon is totally consistent. Yeah, there you and go. A, and the Satanists at the same time don't worry about your spring rituals and paganism. It's all one cauldron of evil. Right. Again, you have been the most famous exponent of exposing this evil and pulling off the pustule of, of, of Satan's infestation of the body politic of our world. Again, the well, amazing you, book. We, we really need to draw closer to Christ right now. We're, this is the crisis point. It is. Thank you. God bless.